Hello, and welcome back to Space Engineers. Space Engineers. You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe one day I should like maybe slow down that intro a little bit. I, I get the odd comment, you know, that everyone just well, not everyone, but you know, the odd comment is just someone saying, just, "For God's sake, what are you saying? Slow yourself down, man." Well, maybe so, but uh, hey, that's my style. Anyway, the ship that you're staring at is one that I mentioned in the last video that was in the pipeline, and now it is finally here. And it's the updated scimitar, in this case it is the C-370 model. Don't ask me on the goddamn name, I don't know. Um, really, <laughs> I make up names as I go along. Now, the C-series um, does actually kind of have a purpose. Uh, the C-series being the cruiser class, in this case C for cruiser, I suppose. Uh, even though the X-series before it was a lot more sort of large frigate slash attack ship kind of thing going on, this one is... A lot slower, but it can do a lot more, and has a lot more functionality at its disposal. Now, to put a long story short, this is my fifth take of this bloody video. Um, a few technical issues and uh, a few derps on my behalf, and I've had to re-record this so many times. So, if it looks like I'm rushing through all the rooms, that's because I probably was. Because each damn take got to about 20 plus minutes before I fucked something up near the end. Typically. Um, so anyway, yes, I'm going to get this done sooner rather than later. So, the actual design of the ship compared to the last scimitars is majority the same. It's got the same curved design that I'm going to be re recycling a fair bit. I plan to do a few more scimitars with different classes, as it were. We have the X sort of attack series, large attack series I should say. C for the cruiser style, which I'm not sure I'm going to make any more of this type, but hey, we have a cruiser style. Uh, I'll probably make an F-series for fighter, and then maybe an S or U-series for stealth class, uh, which I'm going to have to experiment with uh, the cloak mods, although speaking of cloaking mods, um, this ship is kind of bugged at the moment. Um, I think you can fix it by just replacing the turrets and the guns if, and I hope that it, it's not completely broken uh, when you guys get it on the workshop, because yes, I will, I'm going to try my best to get it on the workshop, and if I was successful in that endeavour, then the link to it will be in the description. Uh, but yeah, the, um, the the cloak mod kind of breaks any and all weapons uh, for some bizarre reason. I don't know why it does it, it just does. So yeah, if, if the blueprint's fucked, then I am very sorry, but uh, blame the mod. It's the only time where I actually say a mod has been an issue. Not, th not that I have a cloak mod actually installed on this ship, but I've had one in the world and it was causing issues with ships, regardless of if the ship had a cloak or not. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, this ship's about 25% larger in terms of width. Uh, than the X series, but it has a much larger body, which, uh, if you would probably couldn't guess, contains the majority of the gubbins in the ship in this case. You'll also notice I've actually decided to try and break up the very flat plane of the ship with these uh, arched pieces of metal, which uh, do look kind of nice. They serve more as, uh, you know, points for sloping engines, which, uh, once again, using some azimuth thrusters, because I love those mods way too much. Uh, now, yes, this ship can land on planets, if you couldn't tell, by the helicarrier thrusters I've decided to put on here. Um, but just be careful, because big ships usually are a bit of a problem when it comes to landing on planets and the like. So, let's get in and show you what's going on, and if I can not fly around like a lunatic. Um, so we're going to the main hangar here. Not too big, but I don't expect you to put too many ships in here. So let's close that door and give you a tour, because the tour will take some time even if I do decide to run through the rooms fairly quickly. Hopefully I don't also completely make someone motion sick by my spastic mouse movements. I will try not to these days, I try to at least keep my hands relatively smooth. Anyway, rambling aside, let's get into this, because my god, I'm getting a bit fed up of re-recording this bloody video. <laughs> so, in here is oxygen production and storage, which is pretty self-explanatory, primarily using the azimuth oxygen generators in this particular instance, and oxygen storage with the vanilla canisters here pretty self-explanatory. Why would, I mean, it might not be the best idea to have my life support quote-unquote right next to the hangar door, so if someone breaches the hangar, they get to my life support pretty quickly. Well, it's more, like, this ship was primarily, like, if you want to think of a backstory behind this ship, think of it as a research ship that was mm, jerry-rigged into, into a warship. It was pretty much, that, that was the idea behind it anyway. 
um, judging by its size and, and stuff like that. Now, the ship is not completely mirrored from one side to the other, although the centre sections, the centre corridor, which is uh, just behind that door, and the side doors, left and right, uh, with these stair ramp stair things, are basically mirrored as well, um, but the outer wings are not. So, as long as I got that out of the way, going up here is primarily medical and cryo storage, which is pretty self-explanatory. Quite a few medical medical rooms there. Computer decided to freeze for some reason. Uh, hopefully it does not crash again. If it crashes if it crashes again, well fuck. <laughs> That's the thing. And I even put some ceiling lights, ceiling windows, not lights, they're windows. Get it right. Um, so you can look out into space. Um, and yeah, the entire ship is not very tall, that's for sure. Uh, the actual tallest section of the ship is here, which is the uh, primary corridor. Um, there we go, nice bit of lag there. The primary sort of staircase going up to the bridge. Uh, the left and right doors, like I previously mentioned. The centre door, which would take you to the outer corridor, which spans the entire wingspan of this ship. I can hardly call them wings, but... I mean, they're more like arms, but... I'll call them wings for anyway. Uh, we are powered by a singular, a singular arc reactor in the very centre of the ship. Pretty self-explanatory. This ship needs a hell of a lot of power, and uh, sometimes... Just, just stick an arc reactor in, for the love of Christ, as... More often than not, it's just it's just easy. Call me call me lazy, but just putting one of these ginormous reactors. Well, they're not that physically big, but putting one of these reactors in the center of your ship just is just easy. You know, it's just like, hey, I need a ton of power. Slap one of those things in, rather than trying to like use the uh, the, the regular large react the lot the large vanilla reactors, which are not shit by any means, but. Ships get to a point where they just need more power. Damn it, <laughs> especially when you're using the shield mods. Opening that slightly laggy door. Uh, let's go into the left-hand side now, and let's start on the ground floor, which is not too crazily filled. I've just made it into more of an assembly bay, if you couldn't tell, and there's the other side of the uh, airlock to the hangar over there. So yeah, there's more space if you want to put some more stuff in here, um, but you know, I'll leave that to you. And we got the large, or well, it's not really a large um, old detector, but it's the Azimuth variant, which has a significantly uh, superior detection range, thank Christ, which is uh, kind of useful to say the least. Uh, so that's that. Going back up the stairs, if I didn't get stuck on the stairs a second ago, uh, we have the large battery bank at the top here, um, which, yeah, might not be the best idea to have like windows so people from the outside, if they were to look in, be like, oh, there's like a battery bank. Well, the batteries in this case are only for, really for backup power if the reactor was to be taken offline. Although, I would suspect the ship would be slightly crippled if you did decide to take the main reactor offline. Um, well, cause mainly because those shield generators do require a hell of a lot of power. I suspect the ship could certainly move and fly around on battery power, but um, I have not really tested it, uh, to say the least. It should still remain functional with those batteries in place, but like I said, for how long, I don't know. Uh, so going into the main corridor once again, let's take the front door uh, in this case. Now we go into this little section here, which is actually the very front of the ship, uh, which actually does have a camera above that air vent, which I'll get back to later on. Um, so yeah, just mainly a nice frontage uh, section here. So let's go to the right and I'll show you what's going on here. Here's one of the three large, fully upgraded shield generators. Um, with another door over there for access. I mean, I know I could just jump up here for uh, manual access, but I made a second uh, door over there for that, well, random reason. And here we have some windows. Uh, main, yeah, once again, not the best idea to have shield generators exposed by just windows, but, you know, these shields should be enough, and, well, it's a light armor ship, which, like, once again, it's, you know, if this, if this was a research ship converted into a bit of a warship, then, you know, there's going to be some things which were not changed in the uh, construction process or the converting process, if you're thinking about it that way. Uh, in terms of shield capacity, we have 5.4 uh, MPT of shields, which do have a, a pretty good, um, pretty good, pretty high regen rate, uh, to say the least, so uh, these that, that little amount of shield should regen pretty quickly, hence the arc reactor as well. Uh, and uh, there's the door up there to the maintenance area, which I just showed you a second ago. So, but if we go down here, however, um, apart from seeing some of the jump drives, which we have three in total, and so I didn't actually forget to put bloody jump drives in, so you can travel some distance with this ship, thankfully. Uh, we have just some blast furnaces here, three of them, um, just to hopefully deal with your blast furnacing needs. Um, 
I never find you need to put that many of them in here because you're gonna if you, if you're gonna be mining stuff, you're gonna be mining anything and everything. Usually, so having dedicated blast furnaces, while nice, are not strictly required, but it'll speed up iron production if nothing else, because, well, ships these days are made of nothing but bloody steel plates. Especially if they're heavily armoured, which this one may not be, but you get my point. So, retracing my steps and continuing to the right-hand side, we, apart from having another access to the jump drives, as you can see, uh, here is a really small hangar here, which has access from the underside, which I don't think I showed you, but I'm telling you anyway. Now, this hangar it would be primarily for just, I don't know, crew shuttles, uh, personal transporters, or like small vehicles. Basically, anything you could sort of, anything you could fit into this small space, you could just have it fly in um, through here and land here and stuff like that. Basically, personal transports is what I was thinking, just for like, you know, crew members and stuff. I might even make a couple. Um, personal shuttles actually uh, in the future. Something small I could certainly uh, do at some point and here is a door panel access thingy bob right there so that's how you do that and even a little window to these uh, top side of the ship again which does prove from where I'm standing right now to the to the uh, skylight up there that's how thick the ship is it's there's not a lot of physical thickness to this ship if you couldn't tell um, but that's that's just a thing with the scimitars. They are all really, you know, low profile. They're just rather white, to say the least. And it's a program block under the stairs if you uh, need it. But if we go around this corner here, we have one of the two large cargo containers. Uh, speaking of which, I have not actually tested this ship once again in terms of if you were to fully load this ship and fly into an atmosphere, will it actually fly successfully? Uh, fully loaded with uh, cargo and all that, I have no idea. Mainly because I have no idea how much st things even, these cargo containers could even store these days. Uh, and equate its weight and, you know, I can't really do adequate testing in that regard. But I think I've mentioned that a million times before. So, anyway, we actually have another access window here to, uh, well, not really an access window, but a window nonetheless to some of the, uh, uh, helicarry thrusters. Now, if this wasn't already obvious, for the love of God that it's all is holy, that's not even good English. Please just not, like, don't have thruster damage on because this ship will most likely self-destruct or the ship will be constantly fighting self-damage with the shields. So just please run this ship without thruster damage because it'll probably blow itself up. Um, and yes, I probably could dedicate more of this ship to have normal thrusters and not stack them like this, but stacking these thrusters is so easy and it doesn't actually look all that bad in all honesty. So, that disclaimer aside, if we go over here, uh, we have two doors here, one red, one white. Simply put, the red door is a single door, and because the room behind it can technically depressurize because of a drone hanger, uh, the white door is basically an airlock, as you can see, while this door is not. So it's just a little warning thing here. Now, this little uh, little bay here, which I kind of bolted on, really, because I had not a lot else that I could think of to put here. Uh, simply put, using the uh, small rotors, uh, small head on the large rotor there, you know, connecting a, connecting a large ship to a small ship, basically, in other words. Uh, the idea being is you could have like a small recon drone in here, which I have not built. I'm going to leave that up to you. Connect it via like a merge block or something. I don't know. You guys can think of something. Because um, mainly I was thinking with this bay, because of the ship's size and how difficult it is to get it on and off planets. While it is possible, it is not something this ship can do particularly casually, uh, to say the least, because it is big and a, is a bit big and a bit slow. Um, you could have like a little drone in here that could perhaps do a quick measurement of like the hospitab hospitability, which is probably not even the word, of said planet, and primarily check its gravity, because I do know of a few planets that I have subscribed to over time, which uh, they look like, oh, that's just a nice average rocky planet, but it has like 5 Gs of gravity, which would basically completely destroy this ship if it decided to land on it, because it would not be able to uh, lift itself upon 5 Gs of gravity, which is kind of insane. Oh god, talking this fast is not doing me a voice any good. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory, and you get my point, but, um, yes. So anyway, coming along this way, uh, we also have some more thrusters here stacked once again, but we're just having some small ones, because it looks okay with a window, and we have a side airlock here. Uh, you can't go to the wing tips, because it kind of terminates uh, over there, but if I actually go out this airlock and show you... We are actually only about here of the ship, and the very f sort of tips of the uh, the wings here are primarily full of conveyors and gyroscopes, as that is just well. See, <laughs> I'm trying to make this ship still semi maneuverable uh, while not having gyros literally in every bloody square inch of even the working space. Uh, so if we just lag our way around here, 
uh, go through here again and let's show you the left hand side of the ship and as you, you can kind of tell this ship's a little it's not complicated to the point that you're gonna get lost in here but um, there's certainly a lot of rooms that's for sure I mean I've, all I've shown you is half the ship so anyway going to the left side here uh, once again a kind of mirrored generator with windows thing going on here again with uh, maintenance up above which is so it's planetary this door is actually kind of irrelevant because it doesn't technically uh, save anything from becoming depressurized if it was to get blown out by that window smashing. Um, we have another generator over here, so once again three large shield generators which are fully upgraded, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory like I've just mentioned. Uh, beacon, just buried in the front here, just randomly. Um, have not said that to really say anything, but hey, it's a beacon. Uh, and yeah, maintenance up here, so some catwalks with uh, the corresponding air vents, some gyros just dotted around, pipes and uh, all the stuff. You can kind of get my point here. Uh, so continuing through the door, so continuing onto the left side a bit more, let's take the immediate left door after taking the other left. <laughs> um, we enter this sort of side room which doesn't have too much in it, but we have a window to the nanite generating facility thingy as, well for once, I've decided to put nanites in here with, it, it, you can't really see it, but it has all the necessary upgrades to, uh, to mine, deconstruct, construct, repair, um, and things like that because nanites are actually really cool little things um, Very useful. They are slow depending on their upgrades But the fact that I could just tell this ship to just like hey just there's an asteroid You can just mine shit or hey there, there's a nearby ship that needs repairing or I need repairing it could just self repair itself It's just it's just a really really cool mod It's just one that you don't normally need to put like actually have it in a ship, you know Every ship does not need one of these, <laughs> but I put one in here because I had the space because this ship is actually quite big. Um, so yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, other large cargo container over there, so we have two of those. This one's, this one's slightly buried in all honesty, but it's there. And through this other side door, there's a lot of side doors, can't you tell? Uh, we actually have the primary refinery uh, with all, well, fully upgraded with just some speed and like yield upgrades. I can't actually remember what the... Uh, um, what the modules were called, yes, Spe uh, what do we got, yield and speed, yield and speed upgrades, I'm pretty sure that's what I've got here, um, so we even have full refining facilities because, you know, refining is quite good to say the least. Um, okay, um, carrying on through here, uh, another side window so you can see the nanites again, uh, program block, if you need to program anything, I don't know. And yes, the reason this little bit here does not have any um, uh, any like sl slanting blocks like I've been doing for the rest of it, uh, I was having some like air pressurization issues, and I can't just remove any bits of wall here because well, I get deep. <laughs> Everything will get like vented into space. Now nanites can actually. It's one of the last thing. Nanites I know can go through walls, floors, ceilings, solid objects, even you. Uh, <laughs> it seems. Um, I, I, I did put vent like you know grills up above uh, not that it really needed it uh, but you know if if nanites had any logic they could like you know fly through the vents I suppose and then go off to wherever they, they need to go to but you know this it's game logic don't question it never never question game logic uh, anyway um, and now we have another window here so we've got <laughs> this one facility has three windows to look at it uh, even though this is actually the access terminal yeah I put glass in the way T that Otherwise, I just have a pressurization issue, which is, uh, you know, that just makes sense. Otherwise, well, we're going to have an air issue. <sighs> Carrying on, we're nearly there. Um, and, yeah, another window here to the heavy carry thrusters. Uh, through this other side door, they're just, they're just doors. Stop calling them side doors. We actually have some crew quarters. Uh, five spaces in total. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five spaces, um, which... In all honesty, uh, it's pretty cramped in here, but you can get in there. You can get out. Some of them are. Some of these uh, rooms are so small, you, you might end up like, you know, it's like if I get into this one, uh, sleep in here, get out. Oh, okay, I didn't glitch out. You, sometimes you're going to glitch out the walls, uh, to say the least. So yes, we are using the um, the civilian beds, another uh, sage mod, I believe. Um, now I can't remember when they up when they changed changed this uh, in terms like the update to change this. But the increased doors opening and close speed, which is quite nice, actually. Saves you waiting for doors. Not that I disliked the door animations, but yeah, speeding them up, so, you know. Another quarters up here. They, they, these, these crew quarters were quite literally shoehorned in here. Especially this one this one in here, which, you know, you're, you've got your... 
you got your bed literally, um, you know, next to some of the damn conveyors uh, that actually span the ship because we there is actually a central conveyor uh, pipeline that does span the entire ship pretty much, uh, and the above. And yeah, finally at the very end on the uh, left side is some helicarrier thrusters again stacked as per usual with another airlock so we can get out like so. Uh, so let's quickly show you the bridge and that will wrap it up because well I'm I don't know how long this video is getting but I'm dragging it on for too long and after the fifth take I think even the average even like uh, some of the bigger YouTubers if they re-recorded something like five six seven times they're gonna get slightly hacked off at this video and just want to get it done and please for the love of Christ computer don't crash don't screw yourself up and uh, I went the wrong way I was about to I was gonna go out the side door where I actually need to go all the way up here through the little airlock like so um, and the above so the bridge very uh, very open only one block high but very open you've got quite a few seats here uh, I was gonna have a second um, seat on this side as on the left side as well as the right but uh, I was just lacking in space there, so I suppose this could be. This is the pilot seat at the very front, with a good visibility, to say the least. Although you are a little bit exposed on the very top there, but uh, rely on your shields and your physical surface dimensions to protect you. Uh, here is the weight with nothing in it. Uh, we have like six odd million kilos. Uh, so controls one, two, three are the weapon systems. So little David's rocket launchers and the uh, machine guns. So explanatory number four is that camera I told you uh, earlier in the very center of the ship above that air vent, which is just a sort of a easy way to sort of stare into the distance, you know, stuff like that. Um, I don't think I should mention it, but um, at the front there, which you can sort of see at the very, very front, just underneath the bridge there, I actually have a tractor beam as that mod. It, that mod is not necessary. It is lit that, that block, that turret... Um, the tractor beam turret. It's right there at the front. I can't really point to it any closer than this. Uh, not strictly necessary. You can remove it uh, if you desire to. Um, but, you know, I've just included it in there because, uh, hey, it's actually kind of a funny mod. Okay, so uh, 7 and 8 are the uh, the two large, well, the two main uh, hangers. So 7 is the main hanger, which I'm sort of looking at um, vaguely on the right-hand side of my screen. Uh, and 8 would be the small hanger underneath there. And then finally, number 9 is to activate jump drives. So that's pretty much all the controls. Uh, in terms of handling, going forwards is responsible respectable enough for a ship of this size. It's nothing too. It's not too fast, not too slow, uh, but you get my point. Deceleration is much better than acceleration, as you can see. Now, as these sh because these ships are so wide, as the Scimitar ships are so wide, uh, the uh, the Q and E performance. So I suppose the, uh, the 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 tilt or roll performance uh, of Scimitars are very limited. The uh, the X series isn't, isn't as bad um, as the uh, as the C series is. Uh, but in terms of like if I was to do a, uh, a backward roll, for example, um, much better in terms of um, overall speed. So this ship can basically flip itself right over really, really quickly. That's probably just its physical dimensions, like I said. Um, and if I was to actually do some um, do some turning and stuff, it's kind of hard to tell, actually. I've got, I've got like no real reference um, to show you here. But the actual performance of this ship, maneuverability-wise, is respectable for its size. I think it goes without saying. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about the uh, C3. Th <laughs> yeah, the C370 Scimitar. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to make any more of these cruiser-style ships, but this. Um, it obviously, I think it goes without saying this. This ship obviously means a little bit more to me than the average ship. Uh, hence why I've actually at least attempted to put it on the workshop. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you think of this um, this ship down below in the comments. Also, I. I'm praying that the guns aren't totally broken uh, when you download it, because if so, I'm going to be uh, very, very annoyed. And I'm just and knowing myself, I'm probably just going to say this is broken uh, in the, <laughs> in the workshop link. And just a FYI, we weapons need replacing. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say for now. So yeah, uh, link to my Discord is in the description as always, and you know, link to this thing is in the description as well, and uh, blah blah blah. Hopefully I have not put you all to sleep in this lo rather lengthy video, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.